Hello, my name is Asunja DeSanto. I'm a software engineer developer for the Galaxy project. I primarily work with the UI UX team, but I also do some backend stuff and some outreach. So you might have seen me around a bit, but um, today I'm going to be walking you through the rule-based uploader tutorial. Um, and if you've never used the rule-based uploader, this is a great place for us to, to get started. Um, there is an advanced uh, tutorial that you can follow this up with, but we're just gonna work through the basic rule-based uploader tutorial for now. The rule-based uploader is an, a way for you to modify big data sets or big collections of data sets um, according to certain rules without needing to do it over and over and over again. You know, it's scalable and reproducible. And when you're working with somewhere in the 10,000 range of data sets, it is impossible for you to modify that data according to a rule the same for everything. So it's, it's, it's really useful. Um, we're going to be using this uh, tutorial here. So it's called the rule-based uploader. So you should be on the one that says rule-based uploader um, with John and Helena as authors. There are some, like I said, some prerequisites on data set collections and managing your data. But as long as you've got, you know, Sometime working with Galaxy, you probably are okay there. If you've never used data set collections, you might want to check out the, the data set collection tutorial as well. There are three different um, hands-on examples that we're going to work with here. One is going to be uploading data sets with rules. The next one is going to be creating a simple data set list. And the last one is creating a list of data set pairs. Um, if you guys are ready with uh, this tutorial up and whatever instance of Galaxy you're going to be using up, then, then we can get started. But you're going to definitely want to have the tutorial up in a tab because we're going to be copying and pasting data sets and data information into the block. And if you don't have this easily accessible, then it's going to slow you down. So. Definitely, if you have to pause here and pull up the, the link, do that, and, and then we can get started. <clears throat> so the first hands-on experience, we're going to be just uploading data sets with rules. And it's got some information here. All the data sets that we're going to be using for this tutorial are tabular, um, but that doesn't mean that the rule-based uploader can only handle tabular data sets. You can handle a bunch of other stuff, but tabular data sets just make a lot of sense here. So we're going to click, e click on this copy button uh, right here under the uploading data sets of the rule section. And that's going to take this data and you know, copy it to our clipboard. That way we can use it. Navigate to your Galaxy page and you're gonna click on the upload data button. But you don't just want to paste it here. Instead, up at the top, we see these tabs. Usually, you would just upload data as regular, uh, composite, or collection, depending on what it is you're uploading. But we're going to go to the rule-based uploader. And we're going to leave this as upload data as data sets, because that's what we're working on here, and from this pasted table. So you just want to paste your data in there and click Build. Now you can see that we've got the data in here. But we don't need all of this data. And if you look up at the top, there's a warning here saying, you can't move forward. You're not, you haven't specified a source com. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that. So the, the first chunk, the first thing we're going to do based on the tutorial um, is get rid of this header. We don't need that information, right? So we're going to go to filter first to last rows. And we're going to filter out the first row. So the reason why we don't need this is it doesn't include any data. This is you know, human accessible and it's telling us what these different columns are, but Galaxy doesn't need to know that. It's going to read this as another data set. So we just want to remove it. Um, and we're probably going to start, I think, all three of the hands-on experiences doing that. So we're just going to click apply and boom, we can see that that top, col that top row, sorry, the top row is gone. And we see also here in the rule builder, the list of rules that we've done. You can you know, edit them if you need to. You can delete them. 
completely remove it and we see it pops back up. Um, so it's always good to know if we're wondering what did we do to get to the point where we're at, we have a record of it. And as we do more stuff, they'll just pop on there in, in order. The next thing we need to do is um, in order to proceed, in order to actually upload this, we need to rectify this problem. We need to specify our source column. Our source column is column D. This is the URL. Um, but there is one other thing we are going to do here. Um, we're also going to select column C as our name to name our data sets. And so we're going to add or modify column definitions, and then we're going to add the definition for name as C, and we're going to add the definition of URL as D. So let's see how we do that on here. So we're going to go to rules add or modify column definitions, add a definition for the name, and we want the names to be C, because that is the you know, a unique, a unique, unique name column. And we want to add a definition for URL. When we do the URL one, that's not correct. We don't want to leave it there. We want to drop this down to D. We do the URL and we notice that that error has gone away. The last thing we want to do is change the type. These are FastQ Thanger. Right. And we've done everything we needed to do here. We can click upload and you'll see that it says it's it's working on uploading them, but you can see in the history that now we've got six new data sets uploading and that they match up with that initial table that we had. Um, but the um, in the background, they are going to fetch the data from this from this URL. Um, Ta-da, you've used the rule-based uploader. Um, we created just a simple, like six, was it six, I think? Six data sets from URLs, and we modified our, our table a bit to make sure that we were fetching them from the right place and that we named them correctly. And then we were in uploading any extraneous data like that um, with column headers. Next, we're gonna work a little bit with collections. Um, so if you haven't done anything using collections yet, now would be a good time maybe to pause here and go in and try the collections tutorial um, or to do just some reading on, on collections and data in Galaxy and what that means. Um, but there's different types of collections in Galaxy and the Ones we're going to be working with in this tutorial are a data set list. Um, and then the next hands on tutorial, the part of this tutorial is a list of data set pairs. So that's a list of pairs. And this is just a simple list. Um, for this one, we're actually going to make a purposeful whoopsie, purposeful accident. We're going to copy our data, but we're going to upload it as a regular paste load. So we're going to do a paste fetch data and we're going to paste it here, just like that. Like, oh, we are adding some data. Uh-oh. We wanted to turn that into a collection. And uh-oh. We put it over here. Well, that's not the end of the world. What we can do now is we can go to the rule-based uploader and we're going to upload the data as collections instead of data sets. So you've got two options there. And then the loading the where you're going to load this tabular data from, there's a paste the table. That's what we did the first time where you just put the tape, the data in here, the history data set or from remote files. In this case, we're gonna do it from somewhere else in our history, and we're going to choose that last one that we uploaded. Let's wait for it to finish uploading. Da, 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 da. You can pause here and <laughs> you can pause here and wait for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause my um pause my video too.
All right. Mine is all uploaded now, so we're ready to continue. So we're going to upload data using the rule-based uh, column, the rule-based tab. And like I said, we're going to upload from collection uh, using a history data set and this, this new history data set, click build. Now you can see that we've got, again, some things that we need to resolve before we can proceed. We have to name the collection because collections have a name, specify the source column, which is still going to be this column D, and specify a column as a list identifier. But first, like we did with the last one, we want to get rid of this top column. It doesn't, this top row, excuse me. This top row doesn't have any usable data for galaxies. So we're going to get rid of that first row. We're going to apply and boom, that's gone. Again, we're going to go into rules, add a modifier or we're going to add our URL as column D. And we're going to add our list identifier as column C. And that's just, again, the name. Modify, we're going to add a list identifier as column C. Click apply, and we can see our three rules so far. We still have one rule we haven't resolved, and that's naming the collection. That's in the box down here. Enter a name for your collection. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it this since that's a uh, PRG JDA 60709. Um, if you want to add the type, you can again. Adding the type helps whenever you're uploading things. Um, it's going to make it easier for you to use the right tools. So add your type as early as you can, as often as possible. And that's it. This is ready. Our warning up here is gone. We've identified everything we need to do. And we can just click upload. Again, it'll take a few minutes, but you're going to see now that these same six um, data sets are going to be encapsulated basically in this collection, which makes them. It's a one data set that you need to, one item from the history really that you need to, to run a tool on or, or whatever. So like I said, if you're not sure what a collection is, if you never worked with collections, there are places for you to, there's another tutorial that exists about using collections that can help you figure out what they are, what they're useful for and empower you to, to use them more frequently. That's going to take a little bit of time as it's soon. Again, it's going in fetching all of those um, data sets again. So while that's going, I'm just going to assume it's going to, it's going to turn green, and it should. Um, now we're going to work on creating a list of data set pairs. So this is a, a different data sample this time. You know, the, the actual data looks different. It's got a lot going on in these um very long URLs here. Uh, and it's going to be a different collection as well, the structure of it. Instead of just having a list, like being A, B, C, D, E of data sets, we're going to have a list of pairs. So we're going to have a pair, a forward pair, and a reverse pair. And we're going to be making these matches. Um, and we're going to be doing that all in the rule-based uploader. So if you've never done that in the, the regular paired list collection builder, just creating a collection of data sets. You might want to go and refresh on that or if it's been a while. Um, but if you're good, let's move on. We're going to start again by copying our data. And this time I think we, we're going to put it right into the, the rule-based uploaders. We're going to rule-based. We're doing a collection from a pasted table. And we're just going to paste it in there. Boom. Now it's built, but it's got like you can see this column, which is our URL column, is is lengthy, and it's more than one URL. Actually, you can follow the link up to the point where you see a semicolon, and then you see another link start, and that's because these are our forward and reverse pairs. 
So now we need to like split this up. Okay. And this is going to show you some of the really advanced data manipulation stuff that you can do with the rule based uploader. Um, we're going to take this string and we're going to split it and create additional data sets here that then we're going to pair with um, their partners. <sighs> like we did every other time, we're going to first start by getting rid of that top row. It's human readable, but we don't need it. It's not an actual data set. Then we are going to go to the rules menu and we're going to identify our list identifier as C, which is what we did last time as well. We just want to know which one is the name. Okay, this is our list identifier. Click apply and we're good there. Now, if you've never done anything with regular expressions, don't get worried. This is straightforward and we give you the regular expression we need to match. Um, but we're going to create a column matching an expression group. And that expression group is anything. That's what this is. A semi, uh, the parentheses dot star means anything that is semicolon followed by anything. And we want to split that into two. So that's going to take this column D and that's going to split it into two columns. One with this part of the, of the one URL, the first URL, and one with the other URL. So we're going to go to tools, click home. You don't, no, using a regular expression, excuse me. Using a regular expression from column D. And you guys can feel free, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna just copy that regular expression from here rather than accidentally mess up. If you know what you're working with, if you know your data set, then you're obviously going to be. And we want to, create column, columns matching expression groups. And we want two, right? Because there's two URLs in here. So apply. And we could then come to the end of our data sets here. And we can see that we have split column D into column E and column F, which have two, the two parts of each. Um, of the URL. Uh, next up, just to make it easier for us to be able to see these, we can delete column D. Why not? It's not useful to us anymore. We've extracted the data we need from it. So you can just click column D and apply. Boom. Column D is gone. Now it got replaced by what was column E and column F. They shifted over, but column D that came in initially is gone. It's um, not in our field of vision anymore. Now we're going to split the columns because we've got this column D and this column E, and we want to split them so that they create more data sets for us to use. Um, we're going to split the columns so that odd row columns are D and even row columns are E and click apply. Good matter column. Nope, sorry. It's going to be under rule. I keep going to columns. And we're going to split columns, split D and E, and we're going to apply. You can see now that if you look, you can see this was D and this was an E, and has just popped them right below, one below each other. All the other stuff in the table here, C and B and A, they were common. It was just uh, D and E, those two that were different. Um, and so it just rep duplicated everything here and gave it a different URL, which is what we wanted. Now we've got our forward pair and our reverse pair, and each is a separate item in our table. Now we just need to match them up. Now we're going to use a regular expression again to create columns matching our expression groups. And this one, again, you're gonna to wanna to copy the regular expression. This is anything followed by an underscore and then a number. The number is gonna be one or two in our case, because that's what we know, followed by a dot fastq.gz because that's um, the ending for that link. And we want one group. Okay, so copy this regular expression for now going to be helpful and we're going to um, 
column is a regular expression <clears throat> on column D. Okay, so regular expression, and we want to create a column from expression replacement, I believe. Create columns matching expression groups. Create columns matching expression groups, and we want one group, sorry. Um, we'll click apply. And what it did was it popped out these numbers. So now we know from the link, which is a for which is a reverse, which is a base one and base two. There's an option here to swap the columns D and E just so we can pull this forward. Why don't we go ahead and do it? Swap columns D and E, and that's going to just switch the order for us. That way we see the E, well, the ones and twos, the, the single digits here is more prominent than the actual link. This is gonna be useful to, to create our pairs. And finally, we're going to go back to the rules and add or modify a column definition, which is the paired end indicator. D or E. Add modify, we're gonna add a paired end indicator. D. We can apply that and move on, but one thing we're nearly at the end here, and we still haven't said what our stores column is. But now that we have a URL that is just one URL, we're going to add our URL, and that is column E. We can click apply, and we're almost done. We can add our type. And we can write our name, come up with whatever name you'd like. I'm going to use this name here. PRJ DB3920. And I'm going to upload. What I'm going to have at the end, we can wait for this to, to finish loading. Um, is a list of paired front and forward and reverse uh, readers. And there's all different kinds of paired end indicators, right? Some people use R1, R2, F or R, the whole word forward or reverse. And to use any of these other ones, if your data comes in as R1, R2, you're just going to modify that, um, that last regular expression we had that it pulls, it creates the column based on whatever it is that is your paired end indicator. We're gonna have a list of these paired end indicators as pairs um, instead of just as individual. And we can't see it yet. If you guys, um, if you wanna pause here, you can pause here and um, and then we'll look at the result and then we're, we're really done. We're almost there. All right, we can see that our uh, collection is complete. We can click into it. We can see that we've got a list of items, but each one is a pair with a forward reading and a reverse reading. And so that's how that, that split them up. Compared to the first list we created, the first collection, where we just have data sets, there is no pair. We can click into them to see the data, but we don't see any, any partner or pair or forward or reverse read. That is the, that is the difference between the two um, the two collections we created. And like I said, if you want to learn more about collections, there's a whole um, collections tutorial. I think it's linked here. Yeah, using data set collections. Um, and that's it. We're done. Uh, here at the bottom is a uh, feedback. If you want to add some information to help us make things better, that'd be great. And we, we would really appreciate it. Hopefully you feel now a little more empowered to use the role-based uploader. Like I said, there is a follow-up advanced role-based uploader uh, tutorial. And you can find that at the bottom of that tutorial as well. It's called role-based uploader 
colon advanced. Um, and maybe at least you feel empowered enough to try that tutorial and learn more, and then start slowly incorporating that into your use of Galaxy. I hope you guys have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your training if you have more. And I look forward to seeing you guys again in the future. Have a great day. Bye-bye.